And now, Project Harmony presents another stirring episode of Woody's Wisdom. I'm your host and every man's, not to mention woman and child's, best friend, Woody. As many already know, I'm the very good looking, engaging, and loquacious, loquacious just means talkative, English golden retriever. I will always ask this next question because I'm hopeful, but I know the rules, no treats, unless they come from the authorized folks at Project Harmony. As the poet Emily Dickinson says, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. <laughs> you probably know, I always love spending time with neighbors and kids who want to share their experiences and challenges. Today, I'm here with my friend Boyd, and I can already tell he's got something on his mind. The world can be a tricky place, and we're here to help him and you feel more comfortable about asking questions and talking about challenges. So today, I'm hoping we learn something valuable together. Boyd, hello, am I right? There's something you'd like to discuss? Uh-huh. Hi, Woody. Do you feel like talking, Boyd? I don't know. Mostly, I'm really confused. One thing Woody's wisdom is here to tackle is confusion. We don't want there to be a lack of understanding that causes you any concern. Can you tell us what it is? I guess so. It's going to take me a while to explain. You have my attention for as long as it takes. Did something happen recently? Yesterday. Did it happen to you or were there others? It was me and my older brother, Darius, and his friend, Silas. Was it something physical? Well, yeah. Were they bullying you? Not exactly, no. Hmm. Maybe we should bring my friend Addie into the conversation. She knows a lot about, well, a lot. Wait, wait, wait. Who's Addie? My friend, a Telerix albaventurist. She's an incredibly wise African pygmy hedgehog probably the wisest in any hemisphere. She's an expert meteorologist and she's never wrong about the weather. She knows 17 hedgehog languages and all the romance languages, plus English. She's an expert at martial arts and my smartest, savviest advisor in the most important subjects. She and I share the ability to contact each other via mental telepathy. All I have to do is think about her and... Voila, here she is now. Hello, Addy. Woody, hello, you handsome English golden retriever, you. How are things? Things are great. Please allow me to introduce my good friend, Boyd. Atelorix, meet Boyd. Boyd, this is my good friend, Atelorix. How nice to meet you, Boyd. Call me Addy. It's nice to meet you too, Miss Atelorix. I mean, Addy. Addy, are you working on any new projects? As a matter of fact, I'm teaching my neighbor, Bubo the Owl, the art of Taekwondo. For discipline purposes only, of course. Right now, we're working on spin kicks. He's getting good at them. The feathers help, but his legs are pretty short, even for an owl. As soon as he's ready, we'll tackle the elusive hook kick. Bubo wants to enter the International Owl Taekwondo competition held every year in Oblong, Illinois. Oblong, Illinois? Is that a real place? Of course it is. There are lots of oak trees in Oblong, and those are the best trees for owls and for owl taekwondo competitions. Really? Yes, really. But I don't think you got in touch to talk about owls or taekwondo, am I right? You're right. As always, Addy. Boyd admits he's dealing with a situation that is causing him some confusion, and I said I would get in touch with you, so we can all discuss it. Boyd, do you want to start? Oh, uh, okay. Well, here it goes. The other day, I was with my older brother, Darius, and his friend Silas. They're older than me. How old are they? Darius is 18 and a senior in high school. Silas is 19 and a freshman in college. Good to know. Those guys don't always want me around. But yesterday, Silas seemed to be okay with me hanging out with them. We played a couple of video games, but we only have two sets of controls. Darius beat Silas in one game, and then I beat Darius in the next. Darius was not happy that I beat him, so we started messing around like we always do, where we kind of slap at each other. Not hard, but it's like a contest. Who can get in the most hits? Silas joined in. Then my mom needed some help and Darius had to go downstairs. 
Silas kept up the game. But as soon as Darius was out of the room, the slaps weren't like slaps anymore. He started touching me. Well, touching the parts of my body that are private. Do you mean the parts of your body that are covered when you wear a bathing suit? Yeah. It was really embarrassing and confusing, like I said. It made me want to get away as fast as I could. Did you get away? Well, just then, we heard Darius coming back, and Silas went back to the slapping game, only he was hitting harder than Darius and I do. Darius was about to join in, and I said, Wait, I forgot, I promised Dad I'd clean up the mess in the basement. Silas said, Hey, me and Darius can help, and Darius said, No way, Boyd, you made the mess, go clean it. I was so glad that I had that excuse to leave, and I knew Darius wouldn't want to help. I got out of that room as fast as I could and ran down to the basement. Have you told anybody about this? No. Do you think you should? Do you feel confident that your parents will listen? I guess. Maybe. Most of the time. But this situation is different. Why is this different? Because Silas is practically a member of the family. He's sort of like the third son. We all feel that way. Now I'm really afraid to bring it up. Why are you afraid? First of all, what if they don't believe me? I'm pretty certain your parents will believe you, but what could you do if your parents didn't believe you? I don't know. Um, just keep going to different adults I know, I can trust until someone does believe me? It's really important for you to do that, Boyd. Who are the people you know you can trust? Usually my parents. And my Uncle Phil, he never overreacts, and I know I can trust him. My grandma, my mom's mom, she always listens and stays calm. Um, my counselor at school, Mr. Whitman. Oh yeah, our neighbor is a policewoman, Mrs. Nesbitt. She's a good friend. They all sound great. You have a super support group. People you can go to to get help. But aren't you forgetting some friends who are especially trained to deal with these kinds of situations? No, I'm pretty sure I just mentioned everybody. Think about it for a second, Boyd. Where are you right now? Come on, Woody. You know I'm here with you at Project Harmony. Ugh. Project Harmony, duh. I couldn't be at a better place to get help right now, could I? Nope. Project Harmony is the perfect place to get help with this. That's right, Boyd. You and your parents? My parents? Both you and your parents need expert advice, support, and counseling to deal with this situation right now. The sooner, the better. This is a serious problem, boy, and I think your parents will realize how hard it would be for you to bring it up if it wasn't true. What else worries you? I worry that it'll change the way my parents act towards Silas. And my brother will be mad I messed up his friendship. My mom and dad have always been there for Silas because he, when he was younger, he didn't have the best home life. His parents weren't mean or anything, they just worked long hours and weren't around much. My parents had to fill in for them a lot. Don't you think it's a good idea to tell your family, not only for your sake, but also for Silas's? You wouldn't want this to happen to anybody else, and it would be best for Silas to get the help he needs. Silas does need help, and he probably feels as bad as you do. Oh, I don't know if he did feel bad. It sure didn't seem like it. You can't always tell how someone is feeling. They may act in the exact opposite way you expect them to. Or they may be experts at covering up their feelings. Well, I know how I felt. Confused, sad, angry, and, oh yeah, disrespected. Like my feelings didn't count. Boyd, your feelings about this situation matter most of all. Hey, you know, Silas didn't hurt me exactly. Maybe not physically, but you're dealing with a lot of big emotions right now, like anxiety, feeling nervous or anxious, and there's a lack of trust. A lack of trust? Maybe you don't feel like you can trust people who are older anymore. For instance, would you feel comfortable being alone with Silas? No, no way. It's understandable. You never had to worry about him before. Some of these big emotions you are experiencing could affect you for a long time, even as an adult. That's why it's a good idea to let your parents know as soon as possible. Parents need to create a safe environment and develop a support group of trusted friends and family so you'll always have someone you can go to talk to. That's in addition to your Project Harmony friends. They're especially trained to help in every way they can to get you over the rough patches. What rough patches? Like, you could get depressed, feel isolated from everybody. And you know what self-esteem is, right? 
I think it's how you feel about yourself, either good or bad. Right. And by the way, your parents also need someone to talk to about it. They have some responsibilities that Project Harmony can help them with. It's important that they know warning signs that they need to look out for. Plus, they need to create an environment in which you feel safe. There are a lot of things to consider, and that's what the folks here at Project Harmony can provide. If your parents want even more information, they can also call the National Sexual Assault Hotline. 1-800-656-4673. Boyd, there are also some things you need to know. The first one is that it's not your fault. You did not cause this to happen. All your feelings are real and deserve attention. You need to be able to talk them out with people that you trust. You also deserve an environment in which you feel safe. Your parents and the folks at Project Harmony can help with that. It's really important to remember that you are not alone. This kind of situation can happen to anyone, including pets and animals. It's against the law in many states to sexually harass people and animals. Now what I'm going to tell you about are things that could happen, or they may never happen, but it's good to know about them. For instance, you may suddenly start having nightmares or other sleeping problems. You could become fearful or clingy. You could go through some personality changes like becoming insecure. You could become fearful of particular places or people that you were never afraid of before. There could be outbursts of anger on your part. Changes in eating habits and more. This doesn't mean to say that you will go through any or all of these problems, but it's good to know about them. Is there anything I can do to not go through all of that? Good question, Boyd. One thing you can do is share your feelings with the adults you trust. But also, set aside time for activities that can help you escape mentally. Fun outdoor group activities that you enjoy. Things that involve physical exertion and don't revolve around the abuse. Movie and game nights with friends and family and keeping your mind and body in good shape, eating healthy meals, and getting restful sleep. Boyd, do you feel any better after our talk? Kinda, but there are so many things to think about that my head kinda hurts. Hmm. It seems really complicated, doesn't it? But Boyd, the only thing you have to do is report what happened. After that, the adults will take care of making you feel safe and fully protected, getting family members the advice and counsel they need to deal with their feelings and other details that require attention, like hopefully getting Silas the support and guidance he needs. The folks at Project Harmony can help with all of it. Do you have any questions? I'm pretty sure I will, but I'm really tired right now. That's understandable. You've been dealing with a lot of pressure and tension. Can I ask you a question, Addie? Of course. What's the weather looking like for tomorrow? Well, Boyd, I haven't had a chance to consult my weather instruments or charts, but even if it turns out to be overcast and rainy, things are looking a lot sunnier for you going forward. Just remember, all of us at Project Harmony are here for you, your family, and Silas, too. Please know that soon things will straighten out, so take heart. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Looking forward to being together next time. Bye for now. This episode of Woody's Wisdom is brought to you by Project Harmony and Respect. As a matter of fact, I'm teaching my neighbor, Bubo the Owl, the art of Taekwondo, for discipline purposes only, of course. Right now, we're working on spin kicks. He's getting good at them. The feathers help, but his legs are pretty short even for an owl. As soon as he's ready, we'll tackle the elusive hook kick. Bubo wants to enter the International Owl Taekwondo competition held every year in Oblong, Illinois.